Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Welcome to my lecture. Um, this is our third lecture, but it's actually combination between lecture three and lecture four. And today, I'm going to talk about um, wind efficiency. Um, and under this uh, topic, we have three subtopics, which is uh, which are energy efficiency definition, um, and we're gonna look at a hatch fat components efficiency, and the third one is also the uh, most important uh, component, not the most important, but it's also one of important component in uh, green hash fact, which is material efficiency in hash fact system. All right. All right, let's look at its definition first. What is energy efficiency? Energy efficiency is actually the, our goal to reduce the amount of energy required to product any uh, to provide any uh, products or services. Meaning that we try to use the minimum energy to uh, to deliver the same uh, product or services. All right, for example, in HVAC system, um, in a building, we try to insulate the space or the building the ho or our home so that uh, we use less heating or cooling energy to achieve the same results, the same set temperature and to maintain the comfortable temperature All right why is actually um, en energy efficiency is so important of course first we want to reduce the cost of the energy itself the second one as we know that our world now are facing um, greenhouse effect uh, the depletion of energy and so on. So we try to um, produce a system that can deliver the same result but with less uh, CO2 or carbon dioxide emission that use less energy, therefore less cost and of course um, we try to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases so the motivation to improve ee is to help the emission uh, to control the emission of greenhouse gases to reduce costs to reduce carbon dioxide emission and to reduce one over three world energy need by 2050. This is actually stated by uh, Institute of Energy. All right, so next. Next is um, energy efficiency, the relationship between energy efficiency and renewable energy. Right, just now, actually, um, to reduce one over two world energy need by 2050 is aimed by uh, International Energy Agency by improving energy efficiency in buildings industrial processes and transportation in order to achieve uh, the objective. All right, we come back here. Okay, 
here um, energy efficiency and renewable energy is uh, actually twin pillars of sustainable energy policy without one of this component then the uh, energy policy will not uh, be achieved cannot be sustained all right and uh, the energy efficiency um, we it, it is also seen uh, to have a national security benefit what is it um, natural uh, national security benefit because it can be used to reduce the level of uh, energy import from foreign uh, foreign countries and also may slow down the rate at which domestic energy resources are depleted okay next Right, the factors that affect energy efficiency. We have several factors that I've list down, uh, listed down here, but you may add it later if you have one. Um, one is the improper installation of uh, your HVAC system um, with a with an improper installation. It can actually reduce your system efficiency by as much as 30% of um, your energy efficiency. In other words, it can actually cancel out all the savings that you are expecting from upgrading to a more efficient model. Hashtag installation is a job for a license insured contractor with good references so you really have to choose your contractor correctly so that uh, your system can be installed uh, properly all right next is improper sizing how can it affect your energy efficiency so getting a more efficient system of course, it's a great idea, but don't be tempted to get a larger system than you need um, for your square footage because a system that is designed for a bigger house won't run well and can actually make your house less comfortable because it cycles on and off too much. And your HVAC system serves as a dehumidifier. So an oversized system will cool the house too quickly, uh, quickly and shut off prematurely, which means incoming air won't be completely dehumidified. The combo of colder surfaces and wetter air in your house can cause uh, the condensation and mold growth. All right, so if more spreads actually to drywall or joints, you could face an eye popping repair bill. Next is bad choice of system type. This also can affect your energy efficiency. So your options actually depends on wh where you live. For example, um, in US, for US residents, the most efficient units combine a natural gas furnace for heating and electric unit for cooling. But if you live in a moderate climate, an air source heat pump may be your best choice. And as for Malaysia, yes, that one I leave you uh, to ponder on. Right. 
the last one that I've listed here is failure to troubleshoot. A hashback system actually works at its peak with good supporting cast. A properly programmed thermostat, well sealed duct ductwork and adequate insulation. The most dark work and insulation can be the actual source of your problems. So you really have to troubleshoot correctly. Okay, now it comes to the ways to increase energy efficiency of um, building HVAC system. These are just recommendation uh, from me. So first you have to properly seal your space so that you contain the building envelope properly and there is no um, outside air intrusion. For example, in Malaysia, our outside air is hotter than the inside that we have that uh, where the cooling system is installed and this to prevent the excessive uh, work of compressor um, so that you you still have your comfort um, but with less energy if you let the air the air intrusion from outside to inside because your space is not properly sealed then of course this will increase the um, your load your cooling load and there are also ways um, other ways to uh, properly seal your space for example you use a high performance window this is maybe in in uh, four season country but as for us we can use insu extra insulation on rooftop for example to reduce um, the the air leakage um, and maybe you can coat your roof or your your uh, rooftop with a certain coating like for example um, the green paint as we always use in lab so that um, the insulation uh, helps to contain the coolness in the building and um, won't let the hotness from the outside to come in You can also see the joints, um, the, the ceiling insulation. Um, I mean, for example, in an in, in office, maybe the ceiling is just a um, hang ceiling. So um, maybe you can use certain insulation so that the, the to ensure that the cool space is only your room not the plenum for example okay next is by using the heat waste by recycling um, the heat from the existing system uh, for example you have your written air which is hotter than um, then the supplied air then can extract actually extract the heat waste or maybe mix the the, the air to preheated um, certain I mean preheated uh, if if a, a hot air I mean if you need um, hot air stream then maybe you can Premix the written air with with the uh, incoming air so that you won't have to uh, use more energy to heat the air into the space. 
or maybe you can tap the heat whisk to use for um, water heating for example okay so the next one is um, by by using renewable energy source then of course this will support the green um, initiative and we try to use the free um, energy source for example solar to increase our energy efficiency in our build okay there are um, study cases of green hatchback system implementation yeah I, I noted here that you should refer notes I'll provide notes later um, there are green projects which is already installed in some places around the world and of course in Malaysia too um, here I listed uh, UV, UVC lamp uh, for is installed for Bayview Corporate tow, uh, Tower in Fort Lauderdale, Florida in 2012. Rain water harvesting for Advanced Global Headquarters in Atlanta 2012. Innovative hydronics for Houston Double Tree Hotel in Houston, Texas 2013. Uh, I took this example from uh, a book, reference book from US, that, therefore the, the example is all from the United States. But as for Malaysia, we also have our own green um, projects. For example, um, in KLCC, we use um, ice cooling. We, we support uh, the the hashtag system with TES thermal energy storage um, and there's also another installation uh, TES in UITM Shalam and uh, for example in ST itself Surahanjay Tanaga buildings which is a uh, diamond building um, also uses this rainwater harvesting. Um, this is to showcase the innovative uh, green awareness uh, to improve energy efficiency and also cost effective so that it can be modeled by other buildings um, in future. Okay, we come to our next topic, our next subtopic, which is Measurement of hashtag components efficiency. I listed um, several components, uh, main components in hashtag system. But of course, there's an, uh, other components that I've not mentioned here. Here in this uh, presentation, I just um, listed boiler. Um, the overall split unit system and also cooling tower just to show you the concept how to increase the energy efficiency if you understand the concept then you can apply to other components too and it is to be bear in mind that efficiency is always output over input times 100 percent and for boiler efficiency it involves steam flow rate times uh, steam uh, delta of steam enthalpy steam and water enthalpy over uh, that one is the output of the boiler as its name goes we, uh, the a boiler produces steam of course and the steam how much steam um, how much uh, energy from the steam um, can be 
produce over how much input uh, from from uh, any energy source or fuel source um, times hundred percent that is boiler efficiency so we can see that um, for the output it depends on the steam flow rate the higher is the flow rate um, so the higher is the efficiency of the boiler and of course we want to produce the highest difference difference of uh, enthalpy between steam and fit water if you can produce a higher steam enthalpy with the same uh, fit water enthalpy this also this factor will also contribute to higher boiler efficiency and our aim for the input our aim is to use the minimum of fuel to produce the same amount of steam which means for example we have lower fuel firing rate times gross calorific value of the fuel but we still produce the same amount of steam or maybe higher the quantity of steam is more the input which is a fuel quantity is a minimum that's that are the factors that we can um, manipulate to increase the boiler efficiency all right so uh, so that you can um, understand it in a simpler way boiler efficiency is also equals to heat in steam output over heat in fuel input how much fuel is used times the energy and how much uh, how much uh, or uh, steam is produced times the energy so you can in 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 english unit it is in kilocalorie or uh, in si unit it is in kilojoule Okay, so this is um, four basic components in vapor compression system or maybe refrigeration cycle. This is actually um, the same components. Okay, we can see here. First, I want you to uh, understand, really understand the process of uh, the refrigeration or cooling cycle from the compressor to condenser to uh, expansion valve and also uh, to evaporator okay so first uh, you need to know that in compressor the process of compressing the refrigerant gas um, do not change uh, the phase of the refrigerant which means um, the input is a gas and output from the compressor is also the gas and it does not change its um, entropy so delta s is equals to zero and the process is an isentropic compression but there is work done by compressor here of course because it compress the gas so the output gas is actually um, hotter uh, than before but as for condenser there there is no um, no change in pressure which means before condenser 
which is we name it as 0.4 and after condenser we name it as 0.1 the pressure are the same P4 is equals P1 but in condenser there is phase change so before condenser it is um, hot gas but after condenser it is liquid fully liquid and here we can say that uh, it is a, a saturated liquid so in condenser the hot gas comes in and the condenser removes the heat from the hot gas which results in um, cooler liquid so the gas will give up its heat and will start to change into liquid and after condenser all gases is converted to liquid this also means that in condenser there is um, a mixture of liquid and also gas in the condenser but after a condenser um, there is 100% liquid and saturated liquid at a point one after point one um, we have liquid saturated liquid but the pressure of the liquid is still high so it cannot uh, absorb any heat into um, into it so we need to reduce the pressure um, and now here is where the expansion valve functions it will reduce the pressure of the high pressure liquid to low pressure liquid and across the, uh, the expansion valve the process is adiabatic it's adiabatic expansion so as it expands now the liquid is cooler and um, now the pressure is reduced uh, and as it comes into evaporator uh, the, the, the function of evap evaporator is to uh, absorb heat from the surrounding, from the space. So the low pressure liquid will start to convert to vapor. So here in evapora evaporator, there is mixture of liquid and vapor. And as the heat from the liquid is uh, removed, so after evaporator, um, everything will be converted to vapor, 100% vapor. So now at point three, we have saturated vapor. So we know that P, uh, P2 and P3 both we have a, the same pressure so the only components that involve in pressure um, alteration is in compressor and expansion valve there is no um, pressure altering in evaporator and condenser but in condenser and ev evaporator there is a phase change uh, in condenser from gas to liquid and for evaporator from uh, low pressure liquid to saturated vapor and 100% vapor will go back into compressor and the cycle repeats it is to be bear in mind that um, different refrigerant type will have different um, P4 
pH diagram. So pH pressure enthalpy diagram. Right, this is the pressure enthalpy chart. I don't remember um, for what refrigerant this is, but I th this is just um, a general pH chart uh, so that you just um, understand the, the process. But the um, a different substance of refrigerant will will have a slightly different um, point position, but basically the form of the pH chart is the same, like this. So from point one, um, as the refrigerant goes into the compressor, and after compressor is point two, there is um, increase in pressure, you can see here. So this is the pressure axis. So point one, uh, P2 is higher than P1. And this is uh, in region where a superheated vapor is in. All right, so from point two, after compressor, it goes into the condenser. And at the end, after condenser, we'll have point three and it is subcool liquid. So the pressure from point two and point three are the same. We know that um, from superheated vapor, as the condenser, um, as the refrigerant went into the condenser, it will give up its heat. And after condenser, with the same pressure, we will have a subcool liquid. All right, so after um, condenser, and this is just before it went, uh, it goes into expansion valve. So after expansion valve, which is 0.4, the pressure is already reduced. From 0.3 to 0.4, the pressure is reduced. So, um, we will have uh, liquid with low pressure so that in evaporator, when we just add heat into the refrigerant, refrigerant will, um, will, convert, will be converted into gas. But the thing is, to see its enthalpy, in evaporator, um, from before uh, evaporator and after evaporator, the enthalpy will be increased because here there is a process where um, the, add, the, the heat is added into the refrigerant. And there's also change of enthalpy from point two to point three because there is process where the refrigerant gives up its heat into the surrounding. And as for expansion, um, there, it is a, an adiabatic process, adiabatic process. So um, there is no heat in and no heat out in the um, expansion valve. It's just a valve. So in valve, there is no heat addition or heat subtraction. So um, the enthalpy uh, does not change. And as for compressor, um, in, this, in compressor, the refrigerant is compressed. So there is um, a change in pressure and as the refrigerant is compressed, the temperature uh, will, will rise, which means the internal energy of the refrigerant will be higher. And that results in 
increase of enthalpy in uh, the refrigerant after the compressor. Okay, just to refresh a bit, um, enthalpy encompasses two comprises two components, which is internal energy, E, and also the work done of the uh, by the system or onto the system. And work done is equals to P times V, pressure times volume. So you can see, for example, um, uh, in compressor, we have work done by the compressor and also change in uh, the temperature, which involves uh, the internal energy. Um, both uh, increases. That's why the enthalpy of 0.2 is higher than 0.1. And as for 0.2 and 3, there is no work done. Uh, P uh, is not, uh, P does not change. Um, so zero, delta zero times whatever volume. So we'll, uh, it will result in zero. What about internal energy? Um, internal energy will be changed because uh, heat is uh, heat. Uh, the 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 refrigerant gives up the heat into the surrounding, which lowers the temperature. So, if the temperature is lowered, the internal energy is also lowered. So its enthalpy is also lowered. There is why. Um, the enthalpy of 0.3 is lower than the enthalpy of 0.2. Right, so in point 0.3 and 4, there is of, of course a reduction of uh, pressure here. Mm. But enthalpy remains the same. Why? Because here in point three, we have um, higher temperature. Which means a higher internal energy. And we have higher uh, P. But our V is just um, is smaller and as in point four there's change in internal energy as the temperature is uh, reduced uh, p is also reduced but the volume uh, now we have a higher volume because of the expansion of the liquid that is why um, the change cancels out each other so the enthalpy of 0.3 and 0.4 is just the same it is to be remembered that um, internal energy is um, a temperature related uh, term and the last one in evaporator if you compare the 0.4 and 0.1 there is no work done by the evaporator because we do not have any mechanical uh, system. But in internal energy, there is change in internal energy since um, the temperature is higher at the point one because in evaporator, the refrigerant absorbs the heat from the space or surrounding. So the internal energy increases. That is why the, in, the enthalpy in point one is higher than the enthalpy of point four. All right, if you want to know uh, the details of the refrigeration, the refrigeration or cooling cycle, 
calculation, you may refer to this video. I've given you the link to see the basic calculation of refrigeration or cooling cycle. So why do I show you the pH diagram? So that you know how to calculate the COP of split unit air conditioner. And we know that any um, energy efficiency or COP, um, COP is the coefficient of performance of split unit system. It's always output over input. But the difference COP than the normal energy efficiency is it is measured uh, in power. So desired power output over a required power input. And in energy efficiency, it is always um, noted as uh, energy efficiency is equals to energy output over energy input. There's difference between energy and power because power is equal to energy over time. So for HVAC system, it is normal to use coefficient of performance or desired power op output over the required power input. But what, uh, what is the power output of a split unit system? It is the mass flow rate of the refrigerant times the cooling effect by evaporator. This cooling effect is uh, depends on how much uh, heat is extracted or absorbed by the evaporator. And this is our desired output. How much cooling effect um, will be done or will be executed by our system. And this power output is equals to uh, the mass flow rate of the refrigerant times the change of enthalpy uh, in evaporator means before and after. All right, and the power input, uh, this depends on the process in compressor. And the power input uh, required by a compressor is equals to uh, the mass flow rate of refrigerant times the delta enthalpy of um, before and after uh, the compressor, which is 0.2 and 0.1. So H2 minus uh, H1. The enthalpy at 0.2 minus enthalpy of 0.1. But as we um, list down, uh, I mean, as we write uh, the desired power output, which is M dot times H1 minus H4 over the required power input, which is M dot times H2 minus H1, we can cancel out this term, M dot, because the mass flow rate of refrigerant uh, is the same around all components. Uh, it's the same in, in compressor and also in evaporator. So the term that is uh, the, 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 the term that is left out is the enthalpy at point 0.1 minus the enthalpy of um, point 0.4 as the power output over the enthalpy at point two minus the enthalpy at point one as the power input. So from this, we we may uh, may plan uh, what is our um, our steps or our ways to increase the COP of a system by understanding this. So this means that 
we try to reduce the compressor work and increase uh, to, to, to produce the same result or even better um, here, reducing the delta uh, H2 minus H1. And we try to increase the power output, uh, the cooling effect by the evaporator. Okay, I may give you some hints. Right, so for power output uh, in evaporator, to increase the heat transfer or heat absorption in evaporator, we may design uh, new types of fins or uh, new types of fan with, with higher efficiency um, or um, for the power input, the, the ways how the compressor is working. For example, before we have compressor, normal compressor, then now we have inverter, which um, reduce the spark um, whenever um, the compressor is on and off. So we reduce the, the spike, so we reduce the energy um, and it is more uh, suitable for variable speed. We do not completely shut off um, the system but we operate it at minimum uh, energy level so that we won't have to start the compressor, um, which uh, involves higher energy, um, uh, higher, we, we, we will incur higher energy. So that are the ways how to think to um, reduce uh, energy so that we will have higher energy uh, efficiency for any components. Okay, the last one is the cooling tower formula. Okay, we know that the cooling tower um, are working based on the principles of evaporative cooling and the maximum cooling tower efficiency depends on wet bulb temperature of the air and the efficiency of the cooling tower can be expressed as the inlet temperature of water to the tower minus the outlet temperature of water from the tower over the inlet temperature of water to the tower minus the wet bulb temperature of air. Okay, this one um, uh, of course this is the output that we desired. We would want to uh, produce uh, the, the most cool possible the most possible cool water um, out from the tower. And as for the input, it involves the uh, inlet temperature of water and wet bulb temperature of air. Okay, and what I can think of um, to uh, increase, I mean, the, to reduce the outlet temperature of water, we may use um, a better cooling field. So if we use a better cooling field, for example, we will have different design of fill. Um, and different material of cooling fill, uh, we may produce um, a cooler water outlet, uh, outlet water because um, the heat elimination uh, is better in this way. Um, and maybe we can alter the 
water distribution nozzle to increase the um, area of the water droplets or we may uh, produce um, smaller water droplets so that the evaporation of the uh, water will will uh, will be faster and this way um, the 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 outlet the temperature of the outlet water will also be cooler. This will also increase the energy efficiency of a cooling tower. This way will increase this term. If the outlet temperature of the water from the tower will be lower, so the delta with the same um, inlet temperature of water, then we'll have bigger delta T, which will increase the efficiency of the cooling tower. All right. So that is there are ways to increase the energy efficiency in uh, HVAC components. I believe you can think of other ways or solution uh, how to increase um, energy efficiency based on the formula and based on the your understanding how to increase the output and to reduce the input the energy input Okay, now we come to our third subtopic, which is material efficiency. So what is material efficiency? Okay, material efficiency is the degree in usage of raw materials. Doesn't matter for construction projects or physical processes or um, uh, any industrial design project so we need to carry out the project in the manner which will consume less material or you can incorporate the existing material uh, with um, with the recycled material or we can produce uh, less waste how maybe the waste can be recycled back uh, and be used in other processes uh, in the same um, industry the same factory for example um, of a given material so in this way we will increase the material efficiency of any manufacturing process what is green material so green material basically um, we try to use non-toxic uh, material and reusable renewable recyclable and um, we may also use from the rapidly renewable source for example, plant sauce, which is greener. Um, and among green materials, for example, this is for building, we can use uh, lumber from forests, which have been certified to a third party forest standard. Uh, it is within the standard, for example, like bamboo and straw, dimension stone, recycled stone, recycled metal, and so on. Of course, you can use other products too, from trash, linoleum, sheep wool, um, and so on. Okay, uh, you can see the, the, the examples here. Um, and most of this material is actually um, can be recycled and try to find a, 
a non-toxic material for any process for any um, projects that you want to inv uh, to 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 do to create and the environment protection agency also suggests that we should use recycled industrial goods such as uh, for example the coal combustion products See, from there, just recycle and create a, another product from the waste, a foundry sand, demolition debris in construction projects. And the building material should be extracted and manufactured locally to the building site to minimize the uh, energy in transportation. And of course, where possible, the building elements should be manufactured off-site and delivered to the site but um, by minimizing the waste, maximizing the recycling and high quality elements, um, we have less noise and dust. And for hashtag fill, material efficiency means all parts that is contained in the system of course, like the building material, it should be also reusable, recyclable, non-toxic, and renewable. And if you can, um, for example, produce a material which has less noise for um, building, uh, sorry, for uh, split unit housing, for example or better ducting which has less noise um, and less uh, dust accumulation on it with certain coating for example but it is non-toxic um, and the, the material can be reused back uh, recycled back um, uh, if for, for for example for a certain period um, you want to take off the, the the parts but the material still can be used to produce another product all right so that means uh, you have um, high high material efficiency and if the material is from um, from plant from agricultural waste for example then you will have green uh, green and with high material efficiency so i think um, that's all from me for this lecture i hope you can understand what are the points that try to be um, delivered here so it is uh, to no, worth to be noted that um, it is very important for you guys as future hatchback engineers um, so that you are aware that green and energy efficiency cannot be splitted from any products that 